Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss back again with another video and today we're going to do the real review of the iPad Pro. Now, just like any of my other videos, I'm going to start off talking about everything that I don't like first and then we'll get into everything that I do like. But even before that, let me answer the main question that everybody been asking me all week. Is should you buy an iPad Pro? And my answer to that would be yes. All right, the iPad Pro is a certified beast. This is a hot tablet. Now, if you're buying this to replace your laptop, then I would say don't do that. All right, there's a lot of things you can do on your laptop that you can't do on your iPad Pro, such as USB connections, built-in HDMI ports, CD-ROM, micro SD card slot for expandable memory. A lot of things you could do on a laptop. You can't do that on your iPad Pro. Now, if you already got a nice laptop and you're looking for a quality tablet, this is it right here. All right, this is a go. Now, let's get into everything that I don't like first. Number one, the price. All right, the price for the iPad Pro is a little bit too savage. Now, we'll start with the base model. 32 gig Wi-Fi only. That one's going to run you 800 bucks. But in the real world, where you have to pay taxes, like in New York City, $800 plus tax, you're looking at 870 bucks. So you can basically round that up to 900 bucks. Now, if you want to buy the Apple Pencil to go with it, add another 100 bucks plus tax to that. If you want to buy the keyboard case, add another $170. So altogether, you're looking at about 1200 bucks. For that price, you could just go out and get a MacBook. Or you could get a quality laptop. Alright, so the price is a little bit too crazy. I'm not going to cry about it. We all know the rules. You got to pay to play. But I don't like that. Alright, this tablet, it should have started. 32 gig version. I would have been more happy uh, paying about 600 And then buy all the accessories. And it should come up to about 850 for everything. Alright, so Apple, if you're listening, the prices are too savage. Next, no micro SD card slot for expandable memory. That's a big deal. Now, you got a big tablet like this, 13 inches basically. You're probably going to do a lot of media stuff on this. Why not drop a slot so you could put a uh, micro SD card in here and drop all your movies, drop all your music. You got to use all this cloud storage. You always have to be connected to the internet unless you're just going to you know, flood your whole memory with all movies. I don't like that. It would have been nice to have expandable memory on this. But you know that's not Apple style, so we're not going to cry about that. But other tablets do have that. Now, you will see me reference the Galaxy Note Pro 12 in this video. Because, this, I, I, the, the, look, the main reason I got to reference this tablet, I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, please don't turn this into an Android versus Apple you know, video. But the point of this video is to help you when you're shopping to make your next purchase. So you have to be aware that there's other tablets on the market that have these features, such as the Galaxy Note Pro. You can drop a micro SD card right in here. So I gotta mention that. And there's a lot of other tablets that you could do that too, like the Surface tablets. So you can't do that on your iPad Pro. Is that a deal breaker for me? No, but I would have liked to see that because now if you want more memory, then you gotta go up to the 128 gig version and you gotta drain your pockets out. You're gonna be eating a lot of Raymond noodles after you buy the 128 gig version and you buy all those accessories. Trust me. $1,500 down the drain. Next. Now, this may seem trivial, but no flash on the camera. Right? They have a camera on the back, but no flash. Now, of course, that's not the biggest deal in the world because everybody knows you're not going to be outside with a 13-inch tablet you know, going on a photo shoot. But the reason I bring this up is because a lot of times when I use my tablet, I'm in the bed in the middle of the night. So, having a flash... It's not only for taking pictures, but you're using that as a light. So a lot of times I'll be in the bed, all of my phones will be on the charger, it's pitch dark, and I'll drop some contraband or I want to do some, you know, look for some stuff in the bed while I'm doing a lot of work. I need a little night light. So now you got to get up and you got to grab your phone or you got to have something, a little flashlight on deck. If you got a tablet that has a flash built in, you just activate the flash and you got a built in flashlight. Not the biggest deal in the world. But for 900 bucks, why, why didn't they just put a flash on there? Nobody's going to use it probably too much, but it should be on there. All right, stop letting these companies off the hook, especially companies like Apple. They like to scrimp and save on the features. We got to stop letting them off the hook, and we got to call them out on this. When they break out the next iPad tablet, put a flash on it. Even if nobody never uses it, some people will use it. All right, so no flash on the camera. I don't like that. Next. Now, this has to do with the home screen. 
All right, now this is something I hate about all Apple products. Not too much customization with your home screen. You, you, you can go anywhere around the planet and you turn on somebody's iPad or somebody's iPhone that's not jailbroken and it's going to look like this. You're going to have your standard row of apps just like this. Now you got a big 13 inch screen. Why would they make the icons this big or why wouldn't they make it so you could customize the icons and maybe put double amount of icons on one screen? You shouldn't have to keep scrolling to get to all your apps on a screen this big. And I give you an example. Let's pull out the Galaxy tab real quick. Look at the difference on the Galaxy tab. Look how many apps is on one page. Okay, and now another thing that I don't like is you can't customize it too much. You could leave it like this, but you don't have any widgets. And for y'all cats who have been using Apple your whole life and you don't know what a widget is, this is a widget. So if I scroll over, you see I have a Gmail widget. So I could actually read my Gmails and go through them while I'm still on that home screen. I don't have to click into the Gmail app. That's a widget. Now, I only have one setup on this, actually two. I got my beautiful widget, uh, weather widgets right here on the top. You can have a 1,001 widgets on a big tablet like this with all of this screen real estate. They should be taking advantage of that, but they're not. They're just leaving it just like this. This almost seems crazy to have one icon and then that big space and the next icon. You should be able to zoom these in and drop double amount of icons on one home screen. That would have been hot. We're not asking too much. We're not, you know, we're not going to beg Apple to start bringing out widgets, which I assume they will in the future. But even if they don't, this needs to be more customi uh, customizable. All right, I don't like that. Next, no 3D touch. All right, now, look, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, they couldn't put 3D touch because of the pressure sensitivity with the Apple Pen and all that. Look, <laughs> it's not my job to figure out the tech for Apple. It's my job as the consumer to spend $900. If I don't see it, I'm going to complain about it. So my job is to complain about features that's not there, especially if you just bought a new iPhone and now you got hooked on 3D Touch. That's one of my favorite features on the iPhone. Then you go out and buy a tablet that costs even more than the iPhone and it's, it's missing that feature. 3D Touch would have been a nice feature, especially if you get hooked into the whole Apple ecosystem and you get hooked on the new iPhone, you get used to that feature. So I find myself trying to use 3D Touch on this all of the time since I'm hooked on it now and it's not on here. So hopefully on the next version they'll have it. Please do not hit me with all the excuses about pressure sensitivity and all that. I don't care. All right, I'm just, I'm, I, don't get me wrong. This is not a deal breaker for me, but it's just something that I don't like. It should have been on there, especially for that price tag. Next. Now this has to do with charging up the iPad. This iPad takes a long time to charge. All right, I'm not, I'm not going to say it takes overnight. I would say it takes about almost four hours, maybe three and a half hours, three and a half to four hours to fully charge this up. So now if you use this all night, now I'm not talking about on minimum brightness. If you like me, you'd like to see everything big and bright right in your face. If you got this on maximum brightness and you use this all night and then you, and you know, you, you don't you forget to charge it and you wake up at seven o'clock in the morning, you plug this in, you go shit shower and shave, you're not going to have enough to rock out for the whole day. All right, so this is not the shit shower and shave tablet. You're going to need about three hours minimum to get that quality charge that's going to bring you up to about 90%, three hours. So this is an overnight charge tablet. If you forget to charge it overnight, you better walk with a charger, get a battery, a portable battery charger, get something. But um, <laughs> this thing just charges way too slow. Okay, so now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna complain about it not having fast charge, but it should be charging a little bit faster than that. What else? Next, now this is another thing I don't like. This tablet does have a few bugs. Now, hopefully that'll be taken care of with an update. But right now it does have a few bugs, and one of the main bugs that's really getting on my nerves is when you charge this up. A lot of times the tablet will freeze when you take it off the charger. It'll be frozen, and you have to do a hard reset. A hard, a hard reset. Now, I went through all of the forums. I've been on Apple.com. I've been talking to a thousand people, a thousand people having the same problem. Everybody's like, yeah, just do the soft reset. All right, that's cool, but that's still a bug. Uh, you shouldn't. Now, I had this tablet for over a week, and I had to reset it four times already. If I had to only do it once, I would say, okay, that's a glitch. All right, a glitch is when something happens one time. When it happens three or four times, that's no longer a glitch. That's an official bug. All right, so there's a little bug right here with the charging, and not to mention, um, you do get a bunch of force closes here and there, uh, here and there on third-party apps. 
Now the stock apps, they you know they run pretty smooth, no problems with those. But some of the third party apps like Google Inbox, when you scroll too fast on your messages, I notice it, it just force closes. So these are little things now. I know it's brand new iOS 9. This, you know, it's, they have to tweak stuff here and there. I ain't gonna make the I ain't gonna make the biggest deal in the world about it. But this is just something that you gotta keep in mind. There's a few bugs on this, and a little a couple of glitches here and there. Now, that's everything that I don't like. Alright. Now let's get into everything that I do like, and it's a lot of stuff. First up, the look. Now, I know a lot of people think looks ain't that important, and they're really not, but to some people, looks are important, especially for 900 bucks. Now, I don't know what kind of setup you got, but if you got a nice setup, maybe you got a white table, and you got your white desktop speakers, maybe you got a glass table, you know, a nice fancy setup at work, or maybe in your man cave, or in your office, or whatever you, you know, whatever you do, this is the kind of tablet that's gonna fit your look. Now, I'll give you a quick demonstration of what I'm talking about and this is some stuff I'll leave the links for this in the description but if you want to have a nice setup let me show you some stuff you could get now you, if you buy this iPad Pro you should already have a laptop and if you heavy into Apple you should have a MacBook already get one of these I right? get a hinge dock I did a video for this I'm gonna give you a quick idea of how you can make a dope setup for your game room or for your man cave so you get a hinge dock Get a MacBook Pro or whatever, which one, whatever one you got. Drop it in the hinge dock. Now, if you notice, in the hinge dock, it makes your MacBook stand up vertically. All right, so you have the MacBook standing up vertically. You get yourself a nice Satechi R1. Now, if you're going to notice, the theme is aluminum. All right, it's going to look crazy. Get yourself a nice Satechi R1 tablet stand. Drop it right there. Get a Beats Pill Plus. I know a lot of people don't like Beats, but look how it fits with the look. All right, so you get a Beats Pill Plus, drop it right there. Get yourself your Magic Mouse. All right, have that on standby right there. You're going to need, now, of course, if you're heavy into Apple, you got all the Apple products. So you're going to have an Apple Watch. Now, when you're doing your work on your little office station or your little setup, no need to be wearing the watch if you're sitting right in front of the iPad or sitting right in front of your MacBook. The time is right there in your face. So you might as well charge up your watch while you're doing your work. So you get yourself a nice little Spigen aluminum aluminum uh, watch stand. Have that on deck. You got to get, for the magic mouse, you got to get the aluminum, the aluminum mouse pad. So we're going to drop that right there. Get your Apple keyboard. Drop that right there. If you like me, you do a whole bunch of CD stuff. You get another little CD-ROM, aluminum version. Have that right there. And get, get some nice, nice white cables. A whole bunch of white cables everywhere. Get an aluminum USB hub. And set this up. Now, this is everything that you see right here. This usually goes in my bag when I travel. Because when I, when I do work, I do a lot better. I do, I do a lot better work when I feel like I got a nice, comfortable station that looks hot. So all of these products right here, look how everything just fits together so that's important now I know I know some people don't care about how stuff looks but imagine this same setup right here if I take this iPad Pro out and I drop the Galaxy Tab in here yeah it still kind of looks hot but it doesn't look nowhere near as hot as having the iPad right here everything white and aluminum it just looks sick all right so I'll throw the links for all of this stuff up if y'all want to check that out that's important to me might not be important to you but I like stuff to look hot all right, so the look on the iPad Pro is a certified win. All right, that's important, the look. Next, let's talk about the build. This has one of the best build qualities. Probably, like I said, this is probably my favorite new tablet right here. Best build quality. Now, if you're using this without a case, you're going to love that premium feel. It just, it, it just looks and feels dope. All right, build quality in this, they didn't, that's one thing you can't complain about Apple. The build quality is always there. No cheap plastic materials. The tablet is super thin, super light. For a 13-inch tablet, 12.9, 13-inch, you know, when I got to mince words. For a 13-inch tablet, this is surprisingly light. All right, surprisingly lightweight, super thin, and super quality feel to it. All right, so for build quality, I'm giving this a certified win. I'm not complaining at all. Favorite built tablet. Next. Let's talk about the display. Now you got the 13.9 inch display. It, now, only thing I, I will gripe about the display is I don't like LCD as much as I like AMOLED. 
Now, y'all know how I feel about the AMOLED displays. I like to have the black backgrounds, and the blacks just look super black. Well, when you got LCD displays, the blacks tend to be a little bit washed out, not super washed out, but a little bit lighter, a little bit more grayish, but not a big deal. But the display on this is just awesome. All right, for the PPI Patrol, that's 264. That's crazy. Now, y'all seen the Galaxy View I just unboxed the other day. That was half the PPI, so do the math. So PPI on this is through the roof. The display on this is beautiful. When you're looking at pictures, when you're looking at videos, everything is going to look sick. All right, so on, on display for this, I'm giving that a certified win. Next, let's talk about the speakers. Now, this could possibly be, um, maybe, maybe one of, maybe possibly, maybe or not, my favorite feature about this tablet is the speakers. This is the loudest tablet speakers out of any tablet that I got, basically out of anything that I heard. All right, when you, when you hear the speakers on this, let me throw in a game real quick. Let's go to the game and center. Listen to the speak. Listen to the speakers on this real quick. Let me just make sure I got the volume up. All right. All right. Let's hit some missile command on this. All right. Hold on a second, fellas. All right. My bad. All right. Let's activate a video game real quick. Listen to the speakers on this. Now you got quad speakers. Sound coming from every corner. You hear that? Speakers on this, the best out of any tablet on the market right now. And y'all know the Galaxy Note Pro, that used to be my favorite speakers. The Motorola Zoom, favorite speakers. This is the new champ right here. All right, so if you're buying this with intentions of using it as a little media tablet, you're going to love the speakers. All right, speakers on this is sick. Next, let's talk about the camera real quick. Now, I know that's not the biggest deal in the world. You got that little 1.2 megapixel camera in the front, little 8 megapixel camera in the back. They decent. All right, they decent. Nothing to write home about. <laughs> Nothing to make a big deal about. I don't even got to go into too much detail. If you're using for FaceTime, though, which is one of the only times I use this camera, you're not going to have a problem. You can FaceTime front-facing camera very easily. Even right now, if I use the uh, rear-facing camera and take a picture. Let me see. Let's, let, let's see. Look, I'll, I'll give you a quick demonstration. We'll do a quick little little snap. All right, look, look, yeah, look out. I'm in zoom, zoomed in super close. You see that? That's a nice, that's a nice picture, though. Let's um <laughs> try to do this with one hand. I will take the R1. Okay, so this is a regular picture I just took just now. Alright, so not bad. 8 megapixel uh, rear-facing camera, not bad. Not bad. Now, if you got to go to your brother, your sister, or your, your kid's graduation, this is not the camera that you're going to want to use. Use a regular phone camera or use a regular camera. But this is decent. If you happen to be sitting in the airport, you know, watching a movie or something, and, you know, you see something that you happen to just, you know, take a, want to take a quick picture, this will serve that purpose, especially in somewhere like an airport or a mall or outdoors in a bright environment. This camera's this camera's good. Not the best. Not great. It's good. But for low light, trying, trying to take pictures at, outside in the dark or trying to take pictures in your room in the dark, no good. Like the TV light is not good. And especially even with the FaceTime, if you're trying to FaceTime Bay in the bed and just using the TV light as your ambient lighting, not good at all. All right. But the camera's good enough, though. It's good enough to get the job done. Next, multitasking. All right, finally, you could do some multitasking with an Apple product. Now, the only problem with that is you can't use every single app, but you can use basically all of the Apple stock apps. The third-party apps, you can do multitasking, but you can't do the slide screen. So now let's, uh, let's, let me show you something real quick. We'll go to Safari. Now, say I'm just, let's, let's, let's refresh this. All right, so now say I'm online, looking at some J's. I right, shout out to the number four cards. You know I'm getting those next. Now if I want to multitask, I could just slide over, and now I could do two apps. All right, so now I got Safari, and I got Foursquare. I can also do a lot of stock apps, but not all of them. Not all of them. I could do a lot of them. So say I want to take it to... Uh, Let's see, let's see if we can find something that's safe. All right, we'll go to Maps. <laughs> so I'll take it to Maps. Now I can do two screens at once. So that is multitasking, but you can't do it with every app. So now let's exit out. Say I go to Google Plus. 
All right, so I'm using my Google Plus. Now, if I want to scroll through, let's see. All right. Now, if I want to do the multitasking with the maps, you see now I can't, I can't scroll anymore, and I can only use one at a time. So I can use the maps, but I can't use the Google Plus anymore till I get rid of this. So I have to get rid of that. Now I can go back to Google Plus. All right, so the multitasking does work. It's still in this early stages, so you're not going to be able to use it with everything, but you can use it with a lot of stuff. All right, so let's see. We'll check the calendar. Yeah, you can use it with a lot of stuff. Now, one thing I will, I, I got to mention. I, I'll be wrong if I don't mention. This is cool multitasking. It's cool, but it's nowhere near as good as the multitasking on a tablet like the Note Pro. And let me give a quick example. All right, I have to do it. Say we got a Note Pro. Right, let's go to Google Chrome. All right, so I open up Google Chrome on my Note Pro. Now I want to open another app. Let's open up. Let's open up S Note. Okay, so now I got two apps open at the same time. But you see, I got that little button in the middle. I press that. Now I can swap these back and forth. I can do a lot more stuff. I can do a lot more stuff. And how this tablet really kills it, because this is a little bit even smaller than the iPad Pro. You see, I got two apps open at the same time. Now say I want to open up another Chrome. I can open up another Chrome. All right, so now I got three apps open at the same time. And if I just want to go super crazy, let's try that again. Let's go, let's go super crazy. All right, so I open up another Chrome. And let's see, I open up one more Chrome. All right, so now I got four apps open at the same time. Matter of fact, let me, let, let's open up something different so I could get a contrast. Let's open up a Gmail. Hold on a second, y'all. Hold on a second. I haven't used that feature so long. I might have overlapped just now. All right, yeah, I had an overlap just now with two of the same apps. All right. All right, so now I got four apps. I can open up four apps at the same time. Let me try to get four totally different ones so y'all can see the difference. All right, here we go. Four totally different apps. So you got a web browser. You got YouTube. Got another web browser and you got Gmail. Four different apps at the same time. That's real multitasking. Now the iPad Pro does have multitasking too, but after you get used to using Samsung multitasking, it's gonna feel like you're taking a little step backwards, but at least it's a step though. At least you now you at least now you can do two things at the same time with a big, you know, 13 inch tablet. It would have been ultra whack if you couldn't do at least two. Alright, so now you do have multitasking. I like that. Next. Now you do have picture in picture. That's a hot little feature right here too. Now I know y'all Android fans gonna say, you know, we had that on Android years and years ago, which we did. I remember I had that maybe f more than five years ago. But um, now you got it on your iPad. All right, so let's go to videos. Let me find a quick video. Let's go to TV shows. I got some TV shows on here. All right. <coughs> so did you? Uh, the speakers think on this here. The speakers on this the, is ridiculous. Uh, no, now, so say I'm watching this, I hit the home button, now I got the movie playing, let me turn this down, this, the speakers on this are so amazing, okay, so now I got a movie going right here, while I could be scrolling and doing other stuff, so now I can hit Safari, I could be shopping for kicks, while I'm watching my movie, alright, and you can resize this, and you can just open it back up. All right, so the picture in picture, that's a hot little feature right there. That's kind of sick. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely feeling that. I'm gonna, that's one of the features I'm really going to use a lot on this. Next. Now, let's talk about the Apple Pencil real quick. I ordered one. They, they back ordered. They, they talking about another three to four weeks. So we can't really get into that too much. But I've been using them. All right, one of my boys got it. Been using it for a couple of days, playing with it here and there. And I like it. Only thing I don't like about it is a little bit too thick. All right, it's a little bit too big and it's a little bit too thick. <laughs> I know that's what she said, but there is some problems with that with the Apple Pencil. It's cool, but it's not as good as the S Pen for a couple of reasons. First reason, I don't like the fact that you see on your on your Note tablet, you drop your S Pen right in the side. On your iPad Pro, you're talking about a hundred dollars for that pencil. There's no way to, to stick it to the tablet. 
I, you can't, hold on a second. <laughs> All right, YouTube videos going off in the background. All right, let me turn this off. All right, hold up. <laughs> Live videos, y'all, no editing allowed. I had, I had too many apps open at once. Now, one thing I will say about this Note tablet, you see the lag for yourself. That's the only problem with it. You know, you, you will get a lot of lag. Uh, you will get a lot of lag. But anyway, where was we? No way, no way to connect the, the Apple Pencil to the tablet. You see on certain tablets, like the Surface, they made the, the pen where it magnetizes to the side of the tablet. The S Pen goes right into the tablet. You're talking about $100 for that pencil. That'll be the most expensive <laughs> expensive pencil that you're going to lose. I saw I don't like that. They should have made a way that it integrates, whether magnetically or whether it has a little clip or something. That would have been nice. But the pencil does work. It has a lot of functionality to it. Not as much functionality as the S Pen. But it's a great pencil, especially if you want to write and take notes, if you want to draw pictures and use use some of the Apple apps for sketching and all that. The pencil is a go. Now I, I did order it. It's all it's gonna be here probably three, four weeks. I don't even know by the time <laughs> my time that comes, y'all probably won't even want to see that. But uh, hit me up in the comments if y'all want to see an updated video when the pencil comes, we'll do that. And shout out to my man, all right, this little punk. He tried to sell me the pencil. For 200 bucks because he knew I was going to do a video and I had to say no. All right, but I told you, I'm gonna, I told him I'm gonna shout him out. The answer is no. All right, let's keep it moving. Gaming now, I'm, I'm, I'm not the biggest gamer on the tablet. I will show you some gaming though. Let's go, let's take it to what I know best Atari old school games. All right, we'll do some missile command. All right, let's try, let's try a little missile command. All right, now this is not, this is definitely not Call of Duty. You know, this is not these fancy games that's going to require high resolution. I'll show y'all one of those, too. I just want y'all to see my missile command skills from back in the days. Let me show y'all my missile command skills. Why I was why I was ranked number three in missile command. All right, first, first try. All right. <laughs> All right, so missile command is a go, but let me show you a game that has a little bit more resolution, a little bit more, a uh, little bit more activity and little action going on at at that <laughs> during the game. Let's cancel this real quick. All right, so let's do some Temple Run. Yeah, if y'all watch my videos, y'all know how far I usually make it in Temple Run. Let's get some volume on this. This game, all right, I just I, I was about to say <laughs> this game. It's so much fun on a big screen tablet like this. Now I know Temple Run is played out. Who, who's still playing Fruit Ninja and Angry Birds? I don't know. I don't know. But this is just a lot of fun. This, I'm just trying to give you an idea how it looks. Super smooth, no lag. All right, everything works. All right, I'll, 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 I'll do one more turn. And then I'll just run it. Let me do it. Let me. All right, look, see? I'll just crash right down. Bomb. All right. <laughs> so gaming on this now, like I said, I'm not the biggest game in the world on tablets, so I'm, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not at liberty to give y'all no expert opinion on gaming. But for basic games, Fruit Ninja, Angry Birds, the kind of games that I that I play on the tablet, Atari games, no problem at all. No problem at all. So gaming on this is a go, in my opinion. Performance. All right, let's talk about the performance real quick. Super smooth. Super lag free. All the apps open and close, super fast. You know, performance on this is a go. You got that A9 chip. Now, whether you know what that means or not, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is, it's no lag. You can open and close your apps quickly. That's the that's the thing that's important to me. Open and closing apps, and scrolling and using the multitasking, no lag. So performance on this is a win. And if you ever bought anything from Apple, that's never going to be your main complaint is performance. You're not going to be sitting around complaining about an Apple product's performance, but you will complain about the lack of certain features. All right, so performance on this is a win. Next, let's talk about battery. Now, that's, that's, that's another thing that I really love about this tablet, the battery. Now, I like to use my stuff. Let, let me show you real quick. Let's see what my, you see my brightness. I like to use my stuff on almost maximum brightness at all times. Now, right now, I got it a little bit super bright. I, I'll probably use it a little bit lower than this, but I, I used it for seven hours straight before I hit the red symbol on the battery. So that means if I was using it like a normal human being <laughs> with normal brightness, I probably could easily get 
eight and a half to nine hours, maybe 10 of straight usage. I'm talking about straight usage without turning the screen off. So that's great. Now, the only downside to that is once you do get in the red and you got to charge it up, you know that that tablet going to be plugged into that charger for at least three hours, minimum three hours before you'll be safe to take it off and rock out for the rest of the day. So battery life, I got no complaints. Like I said, heavy use, heavy usage, you guaranteed seven hours, guaranteed. Next, let's talk about the lag factor. Now that's important. We always talk about that with cell phones. We got to talk about the lag factor. I would say on a scale of one to 10, 10 being super lag, one being no lag. If I got to put a number, I'll put the number at one. Minimum lag, and over the years, that's one thing that you can never complain about Apple products, lag. Now, you will have some lag. I'm not going to say it's no lag at all. You will get some, I wouldn't even call it lag, I would call it hiccups. You will have a few hiccups every every now and then, and the, the biggest hiccup I get is the force closes. But I, I'll take a force close over lag any day. You know when you're using the app and all of a sudden, bang, you're just back at the home screen? You just load the app back up and you're good to go. I'll take that over pressing the screen over and over and over and the tablet is just frozen like y'all seen on that Galaxy Note. A lot of times you get that little lag here and there. Now, in, in, in defense of the Galaxy Note, I will say I haven't reset that tablet in about, in about two weeks. Anything from Samsung, anything from Android, I highly recommend doing a reset on that once a day and you will have no lag. If you don't want to do once a day, at least every other day, reset that product. Now, take the battery off, put it back on, turn it off, turn it back on, whatever you do. Now, I usually do that maybe like every every couple of days on my note tablet but I haven't reset that tablet in a while and you you could see you could see the lag on it for yourself but with the Apple with the iPad Pro with any of my Apple products no lag I right, just hiccups so no lag lag factor is about at about a one next now let's wrap this up you do have touch ID I right, fingerprint scanner works flawlessly works a hundred percent of the time not even 99 I say a hundred percent of the time all right, so fingerprint scanner technology is right at the top. You do have Apple Pay, although I can't see any situation other than maybe if I'm in the... All right, my bad, y'all. Y'all know I hate editing, but I had to take an emergency phone call. But anyway, where was we? With the Apple Pay, I can't see any real-world usage for that on this big tablet. Now, I could see if I was sitting in the airport and I jump up to go get a Jamba Juice or something and I happen to have my iPad Pro in my hand... Yeah, I might use it, but chances are I'll be wearing the Apple Watch or I'll, I'll be having a phone in my pocket. So, um, I don't know. I can't really see using Apple Pay on this, but it's there. Uh, you rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So, you have it just in case. What else? Uh, you got Siri. Siri works just like it works on your iPhone. No complaints with Siri. This is running iOS 9, and you know Apple is pretty good with their updates. The only problem with the Apple updates is they take up so much memory. So if you buy the 32 gig version of the iPad Pro, do not stuff it with movies and music and all of that to the point that, you know, and pictures and videos to the point that you can't do the update. All right, that's the only problem with Apple products. No expandable memory. So all your stuff is going to be on here unless you're using cloud services but when it's time to do that update you won't be able to update it all right so but it is running ios 9 and apple is pretty good pushing out the updates so overall on a scale of one to ten i would say this tablet is a certified go now regardless of everything that i said i don't like there was no deal breakers I would love to see the flash on the camera. I would love to have been able to put a micro SD card in here. I would love it to charge a little bit faster. But other than that, my overall satisfaction for this is there. The look is so beautiful. The speakers are so loud and clear. The build quality is 100%. It's just a hot tablet. And if you buy this, you're going to have a lot of fun with this, especially late night when you're in the bed watching some YouTube, watching some Netflix and chill. You're going to have a good time with this. And if you've seen earlier... If you got a nice setup, this is going to fit your setup so hot. All right, so I highly recommend getting this. Now, I will do an updated video once I get the pencil. I did order some other cases. I didn't get the Apple keyboard case. I got some aftermarket ones that happen to look a little bit better, in my opinion. So we'll get into those next week. We'll start all the accessories and all that. We'll have some fun. All right, so hit me up in the comments. Let me know, are y'all getting the iPad Pro for Christmas? 
Or are you going to pass on this, get the Surface Pro? You're going to take a chance and get that Galaxy View? Um, I will do that video probably tomorrow. I'll do the Galaxy v uh, View because a lot of people want to see that because it is on sale now. I bought mine for 600 bucks, and then maybe like two days later, the price dropped to 500 So I hit up Amazon, and I was like, can y'all price match the difference? And they couldn't do it. So I just put it back in the box. I sent it back, and I ordered another one. So I got another Galaxy View, but I saved 100 bucks on that. So I'll do that video tomorrow. If y'all want to check that out, then do that. Shout out to everybody that rock with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google+. Plus. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Voxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time. 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the Amazon Warrior on Sundays. Y'all already know. Stream gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready. No meat boys allowed. Oh yeah. One more thing. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters. All y'all trolls. Close your eyes and picture me rolling. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces.